Hello and welcome to RSNA 2017. My name is Brian Casey. I'm editor-in-chief of AntMini.com. Uh, MRI safety has been a very important topic in recent years and we have with us today Dr. Emmanuel Canal of the University of Pittsburgh and he's going to be talking about a new tool that he's developed that's designed to make MRI scans safer. Uh, Dr. Canal, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much for having invited me. Yeah. Now, uh, you've been doing a lot of uh, really important work in MRI, MRI safety for a number of years and you've identified a problem with uh, how MRI scans are being performed that, uh, that you've developed a tool to kind of help address that. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, people recognize that when you're doing a chest x-ray, you're irradiating the chest with energy. We know there are risks associated with it and we can restrict that energy to just that reason, that just that region. If we're doing an ultrasound, we know we're doing an ultrasound of one area and we shine energy at one location. But when we do an MRI examination, we're using a, a very strong magnetic field that the whole body could be exposed to at different places, at different strengths, radio frequency energies that only part of the body is exposed to and different parts of the body at different strengths, mm -hmm. and gradient energies, which again are different distributions and different strengths, and they each have their own risks. And when you're done, you have a five millimeter thick slice and there's just no intuitive sense. And then somebody says, can I scan safely using that technology, a patient who has an implant that's located six inches, 15 centimeters away from the area that I'm scanning, and how are they expected to, to put all that together? That's been a source of confusion. And these are very, very powerful fields that we're talking about here. They can be extremely strong. The magnetic field is extremely strong in certain very tight locations. The radio frequency energies can cause burns. Yes, these are, these are significant fields we're discussing okay. very much. So uh, tell us a little bit about the, uh, the app that you've developed and what it's designed to do. We call it magnet vision. It's designed to make the invisible visible. It, its intent is to visually show you not only where the spatial distribution of these invisible energies are that we're using in the MR imaging process, but also their relative strengths. So that when you, when you attempt to answer the question, can I scan this patient with that device safely, you'll know what energy is being deposited where, even if it's physically removed from the area you're scanning, I'm scanning the pituitary gland, but the pacemaker may be maxing out the greatest possible gradient energy right over the pacemaker. That's not intuitive, and this will actually show it to you visually and graphically. Okay, can we take a look? Sure, I'd be delighted to show you. Great. So here you have a MR scanner. One of the uh, manufacturers has shared their data with us. This is their MR scanner, and it's a three-dimensional data set. There's the patient already positioned inside the scanner. Let's open up the scanner and make it actually invisible on one side so you can see the patient inside, making it easier to see what's going on. Here is a patient inside the scanner, but you can't see either the implant or the magnetic fields. By pressing a button, now you see the static magnetic fields and where they're distributed in that patient inside that scanner. Stronger where it's redder and purple, weaker as it gets to the greens and to the blues. Here is the magnetic spatial gradient, and notice it's a very different energy field, very different distribution, almost zero in the center, strongest out at the edges. Here is the gradient imaging gradient magnetic fields, and again, you can see a different distribution. Here are the radio frequency energies that are being distributed over the patient. And finally, this patient has within them an implant. Let's make them invisible, and you'll notice that there, there's their pacemaker in this patient, and notice the colors that are these balls, these colored balls. This pacemaker may be approved, for example, up to 1.5 Tesla. As the field gets stronger and stronger, it shows you that it's going from green to yellow to red because now it's exceeding a published safety threshold for that pacemaker. Here is the field's distribution for the magnetic spatial gradient. Green, yellow, it's getting close to a limit back to green. It didn't exceed it. This is the DBDT, or the imaging gradients, yellow but no red, radio frequency energies. So by looking at the published data for the device itself, for the implant, and looking at the colors displayed of the interaction of this implant in that patient with that body habitus, in this MR scanner and those magnetic fields, it tells you a match between whether or not you've exceeded any of the published safety thresholds for those different implants. Mm. That's really amazing. When do you think this app will be available? The app is actually finishing up beta testing right now, and it's scheduled for distribution in uh, March of 2018. And the intent is to distribute it as widely as possible. Right now, it's being distributed to people that take my course, at, and we distribute it at no charge. 
hopefully we will find a way to distribute it worldwide at no charge to everyone in, in the, the next few months. Great, well that's a great idea. Thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, thank you very much. All right, signing off for AntMini.com, this is Brian Casey.